first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, eddy current proximity probes uh, that are used primarily for vibration monitoring. Uh, we are surrounded by machinery in, uh, in our environments. And uh, many of this machinery is very simple and inexpensive. When it wears out or breaks, we simply replace it. However, you may have a, a automobile, which is uh, a fairly big investment in money. And in this particular case, we can't afford for this thing to break down and we can't easily replace it. So in that particular case, we have some monitoring that's going on. We check uh, oil levels, we check coolant temperature and a variety of other things to make sure that our vehicle continues to operate properly. In large rotating machinery, uh, we also have to make sure there's a very big investment here and we want to make sure that this stuff continues to operate long term. So this is uh, where we use eddy current proximity probes, often we just called prox probes, and they're primarily used in applications like this with large rotating machinery to monitor vibration. Here again we have uh, an automobile and uh, going down the road sometimes you might see an automobile with the wheel. Uh, actually bouncing up and down as the car goes along. That's due to imbalance in the wheel or, or the tire and the suspension will take up that vibration so it's not a problem. But in large rotating machinery that's not the case. And what we have is the, uh, the shaft is usually running in a sleeve bearing and there has to be clearance in order for you to provide proper lubrication between the shaft and the sleeve. So we can't have too much vibration here and if you do you start to uh, cause wear and the shaft can move in ways that you don't expect and that can really cause problems and wear. In the olden days what they would do is they would actually have something called a shaft rider. This would be a device that actually touched the shaft and it would be connected to a mechanical gauge and as the shaft would vibrate the gauge would move and you'd get some sense of how much the shaft was vibrating. But you had contact so there would be wear and actually the mechanical parts within inside uh, the gauge would also wear as well. So contact and wear is a bad thing to have. So we use uh, eddy current proximity probes for doing contactless measurement in these kinds of applications. So they can measure very small distances with no contact, no moving parts. They work in harsh and dirty environments and uh, they, they basically do the job and run forever. We're talking about making very small measurements here. Measurements that are typically less than a tenth of an inch and in many cases it's down to the thousandth of an inch. Here we have uh, various uh, probes, different configurations, different size tips for measuring different distances, different configurations on the back ends. We also have electronics here. This is something called a driver. It excites a probe and gets an instantaneous signal uh, out that uh, gives you information about the vibration or the gap. This is a transmitter. Transmitter is a little bit different. It's one of the industry standards that operates on 4 to 20 milliamps, so it's current instead of voltage. It's powered by the loop itself and it changes actually the current output to give you the information that's needed. Getting back to the movement of the shaft again, not only do we want to measure the vibration, but these electronics give you an instantaneous value of what the gap is. So you can measure the position of the shaft as it's moving in the bearing. If this was a really perfect situation and everything is well balanced, the, uh, the shaft may stay in the same position within the bearing. But if there's a misbalance, then what happens is it starts to move around. And it might move in an orbital pattern. It can even move in a figure eight pattern under some situations. So having the electronics uh, really gives you the ability to see what's going on. Here's a monitoring system uh, that happens to be aboard ship. This is actually monitoring eight different bearings. And in each one of these modules, 
It is actually hooked up to two uh, eddy current proximity probes. These probes are referred to as X and Y probes because they're measuring in uh, two directions. Here's a representation of a shaft. And you'll notice that the probes are actually mounted at 45 degrees to the vertical. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons for doing this relative to the machine and how it operates. And uh, you might have noticed in the other uh, diagram of a shaft, is that the shaft actually tends to stay to one side in the bearing. So one of these probes will probably measure more of a gap than the other one would. But by having two probes, you actually could get information about how the shaft is moving around as long as you have the right equipment hooked up to the probe outputs. So what exactly is an eddy current proximity probe? Uh, it's, in its simplest case, it's nothing more than a specialized coil or inductor. Here we have a coil form or a bobbin. Over here we have the magnetic uh, wire or magnet wire wrapped around to form the coil. And in some cases you might have a ferrite core to help uh, increase the uh, flux density uh, due to the magnetic field that's generated here. And of course wires coming back out so that you can make your connections. Here's the typical probe. Uh, it's the tip we just showed you mounted in a stainless steel body. This is uh, typically a 3H24 thread for many machines. Coming out the back we have a coaxial cable and a connector on the end so we can hook it up to the electronics. Slightly different probe, same tip arrangement and same thread body, but now this one's got a uh, pipe thread fitting on the back so that it can be hooked up to a conduit or um, a conduit in the machine to protect the wiring. Now we're getting down in the heart of the matter of what the probe actually does. It is a coil, and the coil is energized by an oscillating uh, a signal running at some frequency. And what it does is we end up with creating uh, magnetic lines of flux here. So with the oscillating uh, current in the uh, probe, we generate this oscillating magnetic field that keeps uh, being created and collapsing. And what we're taking advantage of here is that the field actually goes down into our target material. And what happens is if you have a changing magnetic field, in a conductive material, the changing field actually induces a voltage in that conductive material. Now the fact that you get a voltage, it causes a current to flow. The fact that current flows, that generates a magnetic field, and that magnetic field counteracts the first magnetic field that's being produced. As the target gets closer to the probe, there's more of the field being created in the target it's creating more of a counteracting force and what happens is it affects the loading on the probe and the electronics which establish an oscillation, they establish an oscillation at a certain peak to peak level and what happens is as that target material gets closer to the probe it starts to take more energy out of that oscillation and shrinks the peak to peak signal, the, opera the oscillating signal. So we can also think of this as stealing energy if you will the electronics is only putting a certain amount of energy into this probe. So with, not, 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 uh, with no um, permeable or conductive material nearby, it will establish that same peak-to-peak -peak level. And when the permeable material comes in the path, then it shrinks down. And if you have uh, certain materials actually do a much better job of creating these eddy currents. Here's a bit more of a 3D example. And what you'll see here is that the uh, eddy currents uh, get produced down into the material. Uh, this is very exaggerated because they really don't penetrate down very far into the material. How far they penetrate depends a little bit on the uh, conductivity of the material and also something called permeability. You're probably familiar with conductivity but not so much permeability. Permeability is characteristic of material to um, be magnetized as a result of a magnetic field. 
So certain materials such as copper, brass, aluminum, stainless steel, they aren't very permeable. If you try to put a magnetic field into them, uh, there really isn't any change and they don't counteract. Uh, ferrous materials such as iron and steel, they're very permeable. They're actually a hundred times more permeable than other materials. So when you using eddy current proximity probes, those kinds of materials are much more effective as targets and produce a bigger signal output. Here's a graph showing uh, a little bit about this permeability issue. Uh, on the horizontal here we have uh, the frequency. You can operate these probes at different frequencies. We happen to use about 200 kilohertz. Some of the competitive products get closer to 1 megahertz. These are the different materials and again titanium is the least permeable material and steel would be the most permeable material. So if we're operating at about 200 kilohertz here in steel what you'll find is that we're only penetrating with this magnetic flux down into the material only a couple of thousandths of an inch. So it doesn't penetrate very far. The thing we need to keep in mind is that the permeability of the material uh, that's our target uh, can change based upon heat treating and work hardening. Permeability is also can vary greatly in a particular part because of the machining and processing and localized stresses that might be produced. So because the eddy currents don't penetrate very far into the material, it's important to remember that it's really the surface of the material that really is our target. For good uh, vibration monitoring, in many cases we have to burnish a shaft where we take a, another piece of material and rub it up against it while it's spinning around and we actually are smearing the surface of the shaft. And what that does is it makes it very smooth and very shiny and it also makes it more hom homogenous. And that provides for uh, a smoother uh, operation of the probe. If we don't do that, we can run into something that's called electrical runout. And what that is, is that it's an apparent vibration because the probe is reacting to these variations in the surface on the material and it looks like it's vibrating when it's not. So in many cases they have to do this burnishing operation even afterward after they put the machine together. The other thing is, is that in some cases you can get residual magnetism in a shaft and they have to be demagnetized in order to work properly, especially if you're measuring very small amounts of vibration. So we've talked a little bit about the electronics before and we'll go in a little bit more detail here and it really is that the, again, the electronics pr create this oscillation. The oscillation tries to maintain a certain level. Permeable material causes that to shrink down. What the electronics do is they take this peak-to-peak -peak signal, this oscillation, and do something called demodulation. So they convert it into a output voltage. So if you have a peak-to-peak -peak signal of a certain amount, maybe you'll get a 10 volt output Output, and as this shrinks down because of the permeable materials close to the tip of the probe, the output voltage will shrink down. So you take an oscillating signal and converting it into a steady state signal. Temperature can also be a big factor when you talk about eddy current probes. Uh, the temperature change affects the resistivity of the coil itself and that can be a big factor. Also temperature changes can affect the permeability and the conductivity of the target. So if you have an, op uh, an op application where the temperature is going to vary quite a bit, you need to be able to take these things into consideration and probably do some real-time calibration uh, to take into account the temperature effects. The probes are typically also operating with a, a relatively small measuring distance again for a typical quarter-inch probe it will actually have a uh, measuring distance that's about 30 to 50 percent of its diameter. So if you need to measure a longer distance, you need a larger diameter probe. If you're trying to monitor the vibration of a shaft, you also have to take into account whether the shaft is round. If the shaft is less than six inches in diameter because of the curvature, you may have to calibrate your system differently to take into account the fact that that shaft is relatively small. Since the, sh the proximity probe is producing a magnetic field, that magnetic field actually spreads out beyond the probe. It actually goes to about two and a half to three times the diameter of the tip. So if you have conductive or permeable material adjacent to the probe tip, that can also cause a problem. So you have to be careful about that. 
And here what we have are two different types of probes. This is kind of the general purpose probe we've uh, talked about already. And this is a special probe where we uh, designed this for one particular application. And what we did is we extended the body of the probe out even with the tip. And the reason for this was it was a very small area on a shaft we were trying to monitor and right next to it was a gear. And if we didn't do this kind of shielding, what would happen is the proximity probe would actually see the gear teeth going by, even though they weren't right there, they were maybe uh, half an inch away. So this was a special application that required a shielded probe. Getting back to the gen some general things here, probes that are used for vibration monitoring are typically, typically measuring only about uh, 100 mils of gap. 100 mils being about a tenth of an inch. Again, the bodies are typically stainless steel, 3 inch, 24 thread. The systems, the electronics generally are outputting a signal of zero to like minus 20 volts. So we end up with a sensitivity of about 200 millivolts per mil. So that's what you're measuring. 200 millivolts change in the output for every mil change in the position. Usable range of the probe is about 15 to about 85 mils. In most cases, though, we're talking about vibration that's in a relatively small amount. And it may be under a mil in some special cases, but it might only be a couple of mils in other cases. Again, you can have probes that are larger diameter, can measure larger distances, up to 200 mils, 400 mils, 600 mils, six tenths of an inch. Special probes for high temperature and harsh environments. And these, all of these systems are designed for long-term operation uh, because we're talking about machinery that could run for years without stopping. Any questions? <laughs>